in the normal muffler. That's uh, all they do with the straight pipe. So we're gonna stick this son of a bitch in fucking, uh, probably in, I don't know what that is there, B, probably B1. Now we got this big fucking thing behind it. We're gonna just step it out of the way. How's she going today, Keegan? Good. What? Good. What? Good. What? Good. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> we got the air tank in the shop here the other day. And the big pin here for this to steer was seized up solid. And there's a big threaded pin in there with a nut on each end of it. And of course that won't undo anymore. Dad ended up having to torch everything apart. We're going to have to put a new pin and bushing in. So we started beating this pin back through, but it bottoms out before it can get all the way out. We ended up having to cut a minute here. Had to cut that all out in there to get it apart, so to build that all back up again, but that's not anything too difficult, so. Anyway, we're just gonna cut that into pieces to drive it out of there and bring you back in a minute. Well, it's the next day here. Um, Dad's got the hitch all welded back together up there. That's why I'm underneath of here now that it's not going to fall on me. Uh, I started working on taking this uh, metering auger out because I want to put a, uh, I'll show you, but I bought a, a fancy triple flighting auger. And with having more, I just took this off of here. This is the drive because we've got to get this driven out of here. But, uh, bought a triple flighting auger. The more flighting you have when a, you're doing the real small rate, like uh, canola or millet or whatever, the more uh, flightings you have in it, the more even feeding it will be dumping your product into the airstream here to go to the drill. On the old 138, when I started my farming there it had a I think it was just a single flight which is fine for everything until you get to the canola and uh, what you noticed in the seed row was you could see the chuffs of grain that had come out of the auger so it was very uneven how it seeded and then I'd put a triple flighting into it and fucking night and day so we're gonna put one into this also so I need to get a 7 16 and undo that I got this lock collar unlocked and I've got this end here all apart so I'm hoping I can uh, emery cloth this real nice and start tapping it and everything will work its way out. Probably not but that's what we're going to hope for so I will bring you back here in a minute. Alrighty there we got that apart and I started to just give her a few little tippy taps there and She's going, but I don't like just hitting that like that because I'm going to mushroom it all out. So we'll get something a little bit softer to continue tapping with. Maybe I'll try and just tap that that way. What do you think is going to happen then? I need both hands, but I think maybe that's how we'll do this here. Anyway, I will bring you back when we get this a little farther apart. I need both hands. <laughs> well, things had to get a little wee bit on the uh, violent side. Not too crazy, but I had to uh, give her a few, a few real wallops there with a real hammer. So we got it apart. I thought I was home free when I got the lock collar off. It slid off nice, but the bearing did not want to leave its home. It got three quarters of the way and stopped. I went back and forth a few times and used the grinder with the, the flappy wheel there and cleaned it all up and beveled it a bit and no, nope, just wanted to fight and fight and fight. 
a couple of good fucking wallops with the old sledgehammer there got her to move. So, anyway, here's, you remember what that looked like there yesterday when I stuck it in there. So, brand new piece of bushing, pin, and then dad boxed it all back in. We'll clean that all up and give her a shot of white paint or something and she'll be fucking awesome. We added a grease nipple also because before there's a grease nipple down here but that would only grease the bottom half of the bushing and they had nothing up here so we uh, tapped a grease nipple into the bushing and that's what that hole is for. Now you can get to the grease nipple there so anywho improvements we will go and pull this auger out now. I'll just turn my music down so that I don't have to keep talking over it. Uh, 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 uh. Can't do that, can I? Oh, never mind, that's just rust. <laughs> I thought that was uh, solid there. Which it is, but with movable material. I don't know, you can see it. Can you see from there? Probably not. No, I bet you can. Oh, is that gross? There we go. There's the old one. That's a double flight and rusted all to shit. And then there's the brand new. Why is the light so fucking weird looking here? Oh my god. There. <laughs> and there's the uh, new one that's going to go in in its replacement. Um, plastic instead of steel because that's also does fertilizer in that tank and uh, can avoid this that way it'll wear quicker but for the I don't do 10,000 acres with it so it'll last and it was damn near half the price of the uh, damn near half the price of the steel one so whew played out from going in and out from underneath of there. <laughs> anyway, now that we got that all apart, we'll have to uh, take this off of this end here now. God, the light looks terrible. Strange. Anyway, we gotta get this off now and that'll go on to it. And then we can slide it all back together again, so. Talk to you in a few. I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite pastimes is watching videos of these people on the internet that no idea what they're doing to fix things properly and they're trying to put a new bearing on and they're fucking wailing on it and trying to heat it up and oh, you know, they've just never heard of taking your time and making sure things are cleaned up properly. Some anti seize Line it up. That's how a bearing should fucking go onto a shaft. <laughs> well, I got that all back together again. I made a new cover for this because uh, this one never had it, but there are three tanks on here, you can see. And there would be another meter tube and everything like that and this is where it would dump in but I mean uh, I'm only doing single shoot from this machine anyways I don't really need to have three separate tanks it's not like I've got nitrogen phosphate seed or whatever combination you would do of that I'm gonna have 1152 in the back and then use the middle and front tank in tandem for seed that's what we were doing on the old uh, flexi coil but of course it had three 
meters so you had to set three things each time this way I only have to set the back one and the front one so it's simpler to get my rate set because I'm not trying to get two tanks of different sizes to empty at the same out at the same time if you know what I mean so anyway that's all back together and I started trying to figure out the wiring and oh my god you know how they say some people shouldn't own a welder well this guy here should have had his hands cut off so that he couldn't start fucking with wires because he's got things cut and spliced and just things hanging everywhere so that's gonna be gonna be fun i'm thinking great great fun gonna love doing that but oh my god he had the harness and everything for the uh, monitor so fucked over that i'm surprised it didn't burn his tractor down so i cut out i'll show you here what he had going on he had the power and the ground wires for the clutch and the monitor they're just kind of half-ass soldered together and jammed into these crimps with a wrap of black tape and then they were stacked over one another and black taped together <laughs> holy fuck trying to get it to turn on and nothing would do anything I was like, what in the fuck is going on here started undoing his shit and now look at that it's going to lose its mind because there's nothing going on with the tank here. It tells me all of the sensors it can't find. So, anyway, can go through what it's telling me anyways. I'll hit F4. Keep trying them all. Anyway. <laughs> so it all works. Or the monitor and everything all works at least here anyways. So anyway and then here's the switch box for the electric clutch so on this thing here I've got a I'm gonna put all new chains and everything on it but electric clutch drive sprockets and then that drives this and you can change your sprockets for different shaft speeds and that's how you set your uh, your rates front and back so there's also a uh, sprocket you change here because this tank was on a 60 foot elevator on six or eight inch spacing the spacing doesn't change anything because you're putting the same amount of product down to, no matter what your spacing is because you're still shooting for your two bushels an acre so if you've got more or less shanks you're just putting more or less product down each run to get to the same amount right so but you change that depending on your width because obviously a 30 foot drill is going to have to travel farther than a 54 foot drill or a 60 foot drill to get to your one square acre right so we change that sprocket. I have one here. Ah, somewhere. Underneath all my stuff. So we got to install that sprocket yet. That's for 54 feet. And then uh, that'll be that. And then, like I said, I'm going to put all new 40 chain on. We got those bearings and things done now, so that, uh, build a hitch on the back of it for the anhydrous. I want to paint this auger black. It had an 8 inch on it and someone took a 10 inch Westfield swing auger and turned it into the fill auger and done a really nice job of it actually. But didn't paint it and then I also want to paint that slope of the roof white again. I got this. It's just primer but I wanted it to kind of match that's pretty fucking close I would say so that's the plan anyway like I said they made all of this here there's the lock and then dumps over tip it back again hard to do one-handed and then lock it so anyway 
This runs from the ground or up on top there's a lever, turns it on and off. He's got a flow control valve here for how fast you want it to spin. Like I said, done a, a pretty nice job of that. He just shouldn't have been an electrician apparently. <laughs> so anyways, and then he made that godforsaken thing on the fan with a garbage can lid on top of it. I guess he figured he was gonna pull cleaner air, not be down in the dust and the straw, but I mean, I'm taking that off because that's just fucking dumb. <laughs> And then yeah, we gotta make a hitch come out and miss the fan and everything back here. And it's gotta also be long enough too so that when we turn, this doesn't hit the anhydrous tank because it sticks out behind the tank here quite a ways. So the proper one I think would have been possibly a little farther up, which if you weren't pulling anything behind it, that wouldn't really matter, so. But anyway. That's the plan as it stands. Well, I guess. I think that's where I'm going to leave you guys for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Comment, subscribe, because there's going to be a hell of a pile of uh, working on that guy here right away. The 4640, and then we're going to want to do a bunch of stuff to the old 4020 here also. So make sure you're subscribed, because... I know you guys really like when we wrench on these old girls because there's not too much of that on the old YouTube. So anyway, we're going to get this tank done and move on to other things. But anyways, thanks for watching. Talk to you in the next one.